Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. I know we've been gone for a while, but we are back. And my uh, guest today is originally from Houston, Texas. Yes. Her, her name is Music Carolyn. Uh, <laughs> Miss Carolyn, how are you doing today? I am great. Thank you so much, Todd, for having me. Thank you for joining me. I know we've been trying to, we kind of was going back and forth for a little while, but I'm glad you're on. Yes. Um, and you have a, a great story uh, that I want to get into. Okay. Um, but before we do that, um, for those who don't know uh, Music Carolyn, uh, tell us about yourself. Yes. So I am Music Carolyn. I always always say that I started music from the womb. My mother's a gospel choir director, so I was obligated to sing. It wasn't about a dream or anything at the beginning, it was about making sure I went to church and did what my mama told me. <laughs> um, but once I got to college, I kind of really missed uh, being able to sing when, whenever I wanted to. And so I joined a band and I went to college in Northwest Indiana. So I ended up joining a band in Chicago. And that kind of started my music career, not only um, creatively, but also business-wise. And so I, I always say home is Houston, Texas, but Chicago was the launching of M Music Carolyn. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much me. I'm classically trained, but also just very entrenched in loving music and being a fan of music. So I also work on the business side of music as well, supporting other artists. Oh, you do? Okay, very interesting. This single is The One. The One, okay. Yes. The One. Yes. Um, so Beach of My Own, though, has more buzz right now because it's going to be on Cherish the Day, the Ava DuVernay uh, series. And it's going to be in the season finale episode in a very cool spot. So I'm just really excited about Beach of My Own at it as it is a kind of coming out of the messaging that I've been on lately, which is self-love, self-care, and generally focusing your life and your success on how well you can take care of yourself. Okay. And that was one of my questions for later on about oh, okay. uh, being in Ava du DuVernay's uh, series. Mm -hmm. um, but since, uh, well, let's go back. Um, so how long you been in the business? Okay. I'm going to age myself, but I'll say I was passing out flyers for a Barry Manilow concert in 2001. Oh, that's not too bad. Not too bad, not right? Too bad. Okay. I thought you were going to say 1987 or something, but... Uh... Not quite, not <laughs> <Okay>. quite. <laughs> All right. So you passed out flyers for uh, was, Bar Barry Manilow. Yeah. Is this, was this in Chicago or was... This was in Chicago. Okay. Uh, and so that was my first job in the music industry was as a marketing assistant for a, a marketing agency. So it was our jobs to, back when there was a such thing as guerrilla marketing, to stand outside of concert venues, pass out flyers and drum up interest for future shows or latest releases from artists. So that's what I, that was one of my first jobs. Okay. And how, how long did you, how long did you do that for? Uh, not long because, okay. you know, I move around. <laughs> okay. So, um, but I did go straight into marketing. So one of my first actual jobs in the music industry was with Sony Music. And I was basically the ticket coordinator. So I was the person who would secure tickets for the Midwest region for Sony Music. So if you were a retailer or a radio station or anything and you needed tickets to a Sony Music artist show, you would have to come through me. Okay. And so when you were when you were working for Sony Music, was yeah. the goal always to do your own music? and to be an artist on your own right or it was always to do both honestly i'm a very left brain right brain person very balanced so i love the analytical part of things and getting the paperwork right and making sure everybody has what they what they need but i also like to sing and be free and be completely uh, unpredictable so um there's a part of me that likes to do both and i never thought that i would have to choose so i thank god that i haven't had to Okay. Uh, let me back up a little bit and, and let's talk about your childhood a little bit uh, in Houston. What, first of all, when did you, um, when did you make the move to Chicago? Chicago was college. So college, okay. uh, I moved to, to Chicago in 2000, end of 2001. And what college did you go to? 
I went to Valparaiso University. It's a very okay. small private Lutheran uh, school that is 45 minutes from Chicago. Uh, I like to tell people it's also about 30 minutes from Gary, Indiana, uh, the birthplace and childhood uh, home of the Jackson family. Right. So, but Valparaiso is very much not Gary, but it's 30 minutes away. <laughs> okay. Um, and so you're growing up in Houston and you said your house was full of uh, full of music. Yes. Um, do you have siblings who are in the music business or just just you? I have three siblings. My younger sister, I always say, is the better singer. Um, and she does sing. But right now she's currently about to become a mom for the first time. And uh, she has a very good career and she's not outwardly releasing music, but she does sing. And I always say she's the better singer. Shout out to Melissa. <laughs> oh, okay. Shout out to Melissa. That's, that's quite a feat if you're saying she's better than you. Cause I you... would say so. Wow. She, okay. I would, to, to give you more context, I was very much a child who I actually went to preschool with Beyonce. And oh, what that wow. meant was I was always trying to sing, but competing with Beyonce. And <laughs> that was not a very successful attempt, right? There, I was always told that she could sing better than me and that type of thing when I was younger. And so I became very shy and closed off at music uh, at a young age because I always felt like, well, I can't go to the talent show or I can't go to you know, a certain competition because I knew that I probably wasn't gonna win. And so I became very closed in, uh, but my sister was never afraid of that. There was never any issues of competition or anything so when people would say which one of y'all sing I'd be like oh that's my sister <laughs> and she would never shy away from the spotlight but for me I definitely kind of shied away from singing a lot in my childhood uh for varying reasons okay uh so you went to preschool preschool with Beyonce that's right if, I mean you know that's a piece of trivia she wouldn't have become Beyonce I obviously probably would not have remembered her but <laughs> right. she was very right. uh um you know big if you were a singer and you were coming up in Houston you would run into her uh in your childhood with all the competitions and stuff so and we were in the same dance class as well oh wow okay all right so let's get back to let's get back to your music so yes. um your latest song is called The One. Yes. Um, tell us about that That's that song. Yes. Um, so I recently divorced. And one of the biggest things I feel that has helped me along is really coming to find out who am I on my own. I'm very much a Texas girl, which means we generally marry straight out of high school. <laughs> you know, always have someone around. And, you know, I was married for a very long time and had honestly not in my adult life been on my own. And that's the one was almost like this epiphany, like, wait a minute, all this time, I really was just trying to find myself. I really was just trying to figure out what makes me tick, how I can love myself and where I stand with how I feel about how I look, how I what I want to do in life and those types of things. And so in the music video, you see me kind of having a me day <laughs> um, where I just do the things that I care about. And it's not about my girls. It's not about a man. It's not about going to go get something or earning anything. It's literally about doing the things that bring me joy. And so um, that's what I really want people to just have that three minutes <laughs> of saying, you know what, I'm the one. This is what I need. And it's okay for me to take this time and figure out who I am. <laughs> okay. Um, and so how long has that single been out? Uh, we just released it last Friday. Last Friday. Okay. Yeah. And is that part of um, an EP or an album that's coming out or is it? It's going to be, yes. It's called The Love I Deserve. And that will be out in 2023. But okay. the one is the first single from that. Um, a Beach of My Own was on my Choose Yourself EP that came out in 2021. And so that's that's A Beach of My Own. Okay. Um, so are you planning on just, you know, releasing singles here and there until the album drops? Or is this the only single you're going to uh, release? 
until twenty twenty three or well, I guess twenty twenty three is right around the corner too. Yeah, so. we're twenty 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 three is knocking at our door. There will right. be two singles before I release the entire album. The album should be out by late spring, early summer. Oh, okay. Great. So that's that's probably yeah, right around the corner. It really um, is. <laughs> yeah. And let me ask you about some of your uh influences. Um yeah. because when well, I hear your music, I hear a lot of Nancy Wilson. Um, mm, that's so funny you say that. And uh which is sort of a kind of a jazzy kind of uh, sound. Um, but I don't want to speak for you. Who were some of your influences? Um, well, it's funny you say Nancy Wilson. She, I literally have a picture of us um, on my website. Um, she is one of my biggest um, influences, not because of uh, her voice, but more about her nuance and her ability to emote and her ability to literally take you away into a melody, to, to take you up and down. Even in one song, she uses her voice to, to literally pull you in, push you out, and then pull you back in again. Um, and, and that's so important to me. There's so many singers that can sing their butts off, but they can't move you emotionally because they're not connected to the melody or the lyric. I feel like Nancy Wilson is probably one of the best singers able to take a lyric and put you right in that song as if you're experiencing it. And so that's why she's one of my influences. I never want to sing anything that's not authentic to at least myself, but also to other people. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's uh, very nicely put. I, you know, I hear people say that um, when it comes to uh, doing gospel music, you know, mm -hmm. when they, they're feeling it and they're trying to convey a particular message. Um, you grew up in the in the church, I, I think you said. Yeah. Um, so you're probably familiar with moving people that way. Well, it's interesting that you say that. I never felt that I was one of those uh, strong gospel singers. Mm. So that actually was a mark against me, if you will. So you, so in other words, generally the strong belt and the, you know, growl, if you will, or uh, doing a lot of melismas or runs, as we call them, that was the thing that people wanted in the church. And for me, I just wanted to sing happy songs. I was good with singing the songs that were like <laughs> positive. And right. my mother was the one who would sing the I won't complain and the the really, you know, deep songs. And then I just wanted to sing, you know, all the Israel Houghton songs, you know what I mean? Right. And and what that created though was people. And it, my mother as well being like, you know, give it to them, you know, show them what you got and it, sing out <laughs> loud. And, and I'm literally like, I can do all that, but I'm good. Like my voice and my spirit is in a different place. Like I'm not trying to make nobody cry. I'm not trying to bring nobody to Christ. You got to find them yourself. Okay. <laughs> like I've just, I never ascribed to that. So it's interesting you bring that up. I think that's part of the reason why I kind of didn't like singing in church that much mm. because there was always this performance aspect that required that I tried to move people emotionally in a way that in my mind was manipulative towards making them feel guilt or shame or something that was not always as happy. <laughs> you okay. know what I mean? I, like in I, other words, gospel is always made to make you feel convicted or make you bring out your pain or give it up to the Lord. And it's like, but everything don't hurt though. Right. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> so that in that way, I'm, I'm a bit different. And I think that's why I definitely have taken the path that I have musically. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the cash app. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. BGRCWQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Hey, I'm Kenny Lattimore, and you're checking out the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with my brother Todd Woods. Now, back to our conversation. Okay. Uh, let me back up just a little bit. So you went to college in Chicago. Uh, and now... Northwest Indiana. I, no, I okay, Northwest. All right. 
<laughs> Chicago area. I guess. I'll uh, say that. Um, and so now you're in LA. What sparked the move to uh, to LA? My my music business career. Oh, okay. um, uh, after I finished with Sony Music, I also worked for Live Nation for a time. And then when I came out here, I started in sync licensing. So I started working for Entertainment Tonight in the Insider when I first moved to LA. And that became, you know, almost 12 years of uh, a really amazing opportunity. And so that that was the move. The move was always to move to L.A., um, but I was always fortunate to find really good opportunities um, in the music business. And that's what got me here. <laughs> OK. And I also read in uh, in your bio that you're also a voting member of the Recording Academy. I am. I'm also a member of the Television Academy and the Guild of Music Supervisors. Um, I take these organizations very seriously because they support the community that's working. And as much as I want to push my career, I really want to be among people who are my colleagues, who I can support, who I can cheer on. And when it's time to vote, <laughs> I want it to be someone I know and love and, and can uh, kind of speak to how it how they got there, how they came to be successful, because mentorship is also important to me. So yeah, I try to be uh, super uh, supportive of these organizations. Okay. Uh, congratulations uh, to you for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so let's get back to, uh, I want to talk about the um, the beach on my own. Yeah. Uh, how did the connection with Ava DuVernay, I hope I'm pronouncing yes. that right. Uh, yeah. How did that come about where this particular song is going to be featured i think it was the the last episode of the season you said it or? is it's okay. going to be in the season finale um obviously i'm in the music business so i like to put my songs i always say my songs are really for visual i try to create songs that talk about nature that talk about experiences and in, in touch and feel and um i do that because i see them for screen, right? And so I have a few, you know, sync agents. And so those songs were out there in that way. I didn't meet up with her or otherwise um, directly get connected, but uh, they were looking for a specific song for the season finale and my song was picked, but I, I didn't know her personally to get that opportunity. Okay. Um, just backing up to your music a little bit. Uh, when I hear your music, it it's just um, it's just great cruising music, you know. Like we just going for a long drive, just yes. you know. I, it's I, funny you say that. My father and I one of one of the beauties of my love for music and why I feel I took the path into the music business was because my father used to take me on long car drives mm. and we literally would just listen to music, not really talk that much. <laughs> and he would be like, well, what about this one? Would, do you know this one? And so I very much have that mellow, let's just cruise, let's just hang and let's just think about life and enjoy life uh, type of mood to most of my music. Okay. Um, so Carolyn, um, um, how would you describe your music? I, I know I describe it. Um, like the songs that I've heard are, like I said, just great cruising music and your sound sort of reminds me of Nancy Wilson, but how would you describe uh, your music? So I have called it R and chill. Like we okay. ain't gonna have no blues, <laughs> but we gonna chill. Um, All right. <laughs> I've called it vacation soul because we're not gonna do nothing too serious. We're gonna have a good time, but it's still gonna be soulful. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I've called it, jazzy because again like you said those melodies i'm always my melodies are very jazzy and and my vocal my background vocal arrangements are very much horn arrangements i always say um anything you hear me sing is just me trying to play my clarinet again uh the clarinet was one of my um early instruments and so um that's how i would so jazzy vacation soul r and chill um very inspirational as well but never too serious and very much gratitude music. If there was a way to express it beyond genre, my music is gratitude music, whether it's gratitude for my own existence, whether it's gratitude for nature, whether it's gratitude for just the connection between two human beings. And there are some songs that are very sensual, <laughs> okay. but 
you know, I usually don't release those singles because they are very blatantly sensual. So yeah, y'all have to, you know, go to Spotify. <laughs> Use so you your imagination on that. Right? Yeah, you have to <laughs> you have to do that. Okay. Um, so what's 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 next for you? I know we got the album coming out, um, you know early to mid 2023, but what else is, are you going to tour at all? Are you going out to support? I have, the... Yes. I have a, a show in Chicago, December 10th at the promontory. So those Chicago people, I know y'all all about bringing soul back, very supportive live music community. So um, I'll be in Chicago, December 10th in the new year. I am going to create this sound bath and music carolyn experience so that people can meditate but also listen to my music and have um what i call a more grounded experience with live music um a lot of my shows in the previous these last few years not only because of covid but just because of what i wanted have always been outdoors and so i've done sunset serenades i've done garden uh types of performances and so i plan to continue to do that okay any um any dates in SoCal or Southern California coming up? They're coming. <laughs> They're coming. I am trying, literally, I'm trying to make sure that I'm the promoter of those events so that I can create the environment that I want to. I'm very much not about numbers more so than I am about experience. So it's not important to me to have everybody packed into a club. I want people to be able to relax and experience the things that I'm singing about. Um, last year, I did a performance at Greystone Mansion and being able to sing songs like My Garden or Water or Beach of My Own and those types of things at this beautiful estate with all of these beautiful, you know, garden and um, this architecture and all of that. That's my hope that people can experience my music in beautiful places where it belongs. You know, I don't like <laughs> so much singing about Sunrise if I'm in a dark black theater. So mm -hmm. I think you understand. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, so we touched on uh, a lot of things. Anything else that you want to uh, talk about before we uh, close out this interview or? Yes. I want to talk about the soft, soft life. Okay. Um, lately, Black women in particular have been associated with saying they're in their soft life era or they're taking things easier. They are no longer the strong Black woman. And I just want to affirm that for not only Black women, but for anyone who is in the life of a Black woman to allow her to be soft, allow her to be weak, allow her to cry, allow her to not need to help you, <laughs> allow her to have the luxury things that maybe she doesn't even desire, but may need to experience, um, allow her to heal, allow her to be at peace, allow her silence. These are the things that I want to embody in my music, but I hope it crosses over into the lives of the women uh, that I experience, but also the men. Um, I think a lot of times there's this idea that Black women are needy. And I say to those who feel this way, we don't need much at all. We are very self-sufficient in a lot of ways. And for that reason, we deserve so much more than what we're given in a lot of situations. So my prayer and my hope is that whoever you are, whether you're a brother, a husband, a boyfriend, a homie, whatever, that you allow Black women, whether or not they've asked you or not, to experience a soft life, even if it's just for a day, even if it's just for an hour, allow them to see themselves as completely taken care of um, because we don't all get that experience. Okay. Uh, I had never heard the term soft light, but. Okay. Now you got to look it up. But I'm glad you explained it. Uh, <laughs> duly noted. Um, yeah. But yeah, you... the whole music video for the one is about um, embodying that idea of a soft life. Okay. Um, Carolyn, how can people reach out to you on uh, social media? On social media, I'm at Music Carolyn Everywhere. I always say start at YouTube because you get to see my music videos and a few interviews that I've done and really feel my energy. I feel that Instagram, I'm just, I don't believe in posting every day. I don't, I don't want to be a part of your life every day. 
that's not what I'm here for. <laughs> right. My music is for you to turn it on when you need it. And so generally speaking, I'm not very um, on a daily basis with any type of platform. But I think if you start at YouTube, it'll give you a good, peaceful experience. That'll be good for you when you need it or when you want it. Okay. And we can find your music. Uh, I know you say YouTube, but are you but on Spotify music. and all yes. the other oh, streaming yes. services? Yes, I'm on all streaming services, streaming platforms. Just search Music Carolyn, um, The One, or Choose Yourself, or Fireworks and Ocean Waves. Those are all my releases. Um, but yeah, you can find me anywhere as Music Carolyn. Um, and I also have a website, musiccarolyn.com. So M-U-S-I-C. C-A-R-O-L-Y-N and we'll put it in the chat or in the podcast so you will know. Uh, but yeah, I'm available and around and just really want um, people to hear peace and ease okay. when they listen to my music. Okay. And we'll put a put Carolyn's, uh, all her social media contacts as well as her website in the show notes on this uh, episode and also on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Um, Miss Carolyn, um, going back to, uh, well, going forward to okay. 2023, yes. uh, how many tracks, do you know how many tracks are going to be on your new, uh, EP slash yes, album? 12. 12. Okay. So that's, yeah. that's a pretty big project. I do. I do full albums. Um, okay. like I said, Fireworks and Ocean Waves was my first full album. Um, Choose Yourself was an EP, kind of an entree of uh ideas that was specifically about self-care um but this the love i deserve will have the whole spectrum if you will of exactly what what that means right the love i deserve comes from so many different places right it's not just from a man it's not just from myself it's not just from my children it's not just from the work that i do it's not just from god it's from literally everything that i can experience it's from the river <laughs> it's from a tree is from the little squirrels that I'll be witnessing in the garden when I go. <laughs> um, there's love so many places. There's this song called Love is All Around that Rochelle Farrell used to perform at her live performances, but it never got released. Um, and that song is also something that just feels right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just want to embody the, the fullness of love that's available when you hear the love I deserve. Okay. And I, I'm sorry, I got one more question for you. Yeah. Um, what's your what's your uh what's your writing style? How do you are you just write do you write when you just feel inspired or do you set time out during the day to to write? How do you go about creating? I truly believe that I am just one channel on the network that is God and the network that creates or gives these messages where they need to be given. What that basically means is I'm always on, sometimes just receiving, sometimes recording and giving and writing, and sometimes just feeling. So I know I didn't quite say it, but basically no matter where I am, something is happening musically with me. And so it can be voice notes. It can be in a studio to attract someone sent to me. It could be literally outdoors. I've written so many songs at the beach, just literally sitting at the beach with no intention to write music. But right. then I'm like, oh, oh, <laughs> and then I have everything. So there's just so many ways music has come to me. Um, the song Water which we didn't talk about much, but the song Water is this ode to all the things I love to do with water. And I kind of almost forgot, like, wait, I drink hot tea. I do little, these little walks on the lakefront. I love going to the beach. I love the smell of morning dew. Like I'm, I'm again, I'm a Texas girl. So I used to be able to wake up and smell the dew on the grass. And I literally would go outside just to do that. <laughs> so you know, I just try to feel and observe what God gave me that day and then write it down or put it to melody. And sometimes it gets released and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> okay. Um, well, Miss Carolyn, I've uh, I've enjoyed this conversation. Yes. Thank you, Todd. This yeah. Is great. Yeah. And uh, thank you for coming. And uh, like I said, I'm glad we got a chance to connect. I'm going to give you the last word. 
or not. <laughs> no, no, I, I want to say I'm I'm very serious about this. So if you're someone who doesn't know why you haven't received or experienced the life that you want, look no farther than the mirror. There is no one to blame. There is no one to shame. Find yourself. You are the one. Oh, bravo, bravo. All right. And on that note, thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. And special thanks to my musical guest, Music Carolyn. And uh, we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Music Carolyn. You can find out more about Carolyn on her website at musiccarolyn.com, as well as all her social media sites. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week. <laughs>